Good job. Strategy number two, wheel of life. A lot of people in life, they don't know where to start from. They get stuck in a rut and they go to a sales training because they think they need sales training to come back to the workforce to realize that those new skills didn't enhance their performance. Some people think they need more money, but they're working on the wrong part of their life. So in order for us to be successful in life, we need to have an accurate starting point. And that comes down to self-awareness. So Vikash, thanks for volunteering. Come and join me. What we've got to do for our partners today, and if you'd like to bring your book up, I'll do this for you. If you want to do this up on the board as well, I've got one. What we're going to do is we're going to have an accurate starting point of where we are. The mistake in business is often people start from the wrong spot. They exhaust a lot of energy and money working on the wrong thing. So what you're going to do for your partners is you're going to help them determine their wheel of life. Where is their starting point and to where they want to be? And we're going to start to detect the patterns. So we're going to do this on a scale of one through to 10. So there's seven areas we want to have a look at here. Finance, personal growth, health, family, relationships, social life, attitude, and career. Or is that eight? Must be eight. So yeah. on a scale of one to 10, how satisfied are you right now with finance in probably, your life? Probably a one. A one. In context of personal growth, how satisfied are you with your life right now? Probably an eight. Eight. In health? Probably a six. Six. And with family? Probably a seven. A seven. With relationships? Probably a seven. A seven. With your social life out of ten? Probably a seven. Seven. And your mental attitudes? Probably eight, nine. Eight, nine. And your career, how satisfied are you with your career right now? Probably a six. Six. So you've just learned sensory acuity. What did you notice with his body throughout that exercise? Did you start to see the patterns? So when you do this exercise, just notice how they start to shift. So there was a one for finance and personal growth was eight. So we're going to start to line this up. We're going to draw a line to connect all the numbers from eight through to six, from six through to seven, from seven through to seven, for social life, seven, for attitude, eight, nine, for career, six, and for finance, one. So good news for Vikash, that looks like a fortune cookie. <laughs> so good things are about to happen. So. Has anybody heard the quote, success leaves clues? Yeah. Yeah. We believe that you have all the resources within you to succeed. If Vikash can get an eight to nine in one area of his life, why doesn't he have an eight to nine in the other? Well, the simple answer is he's probably just doing different things in one area of their life than the other. And as a part of coaching and leadership and the people that you're working with, you've got to help them spot these things. So your strongest area was attitude. Okay. So on page number seven, we're going to write strongest area <coughs> is attitude. And you gave that an eight, nine. And you said your weakest area was finance. And you gave yourself a one. So we want to detect the patterns, but also you watch the physiology and your skin is getting much darker. <laughs> We're watching it now. So what are you doing in attitude to give yourself an eight or nine out of 10? What do you do to work on your attitude? I guess, um, I think, I guess I'm, um, I'm continuously improving um, on my emotional intelligence, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm constantly I'm constantly sort of like fitting into that. Mm -hmm. Good. More times than not, so. Excellent. Yeah. What else are you doing to give yourself an eight, nine out of 10 for attitude? What else do you do on a daily basis? 
Um, I tried to practice to establish good rapport with my own unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. um, reading. Mm -hmm. Articles. <laughs> Anything else? Expanding my knowledge mm -hmm. in certain areas of coaching. Excellent. So we can detect what he's doing. So the weakest area of your life was finance. You gave yourself a one. Mm. What if you constantly improved your financial skill sets? What would happen? You're good. You're good. If you fitted more time in to learn about finance, what would happen? Then I'll be able to implement that. So I'll have I'll have a strategy stream. I'll have the knowledge of the strategies to implement. So I'll be able to see the I'll be able to see the results for it. So. Mm -hmm. And if you practice those financial strategies more often, what would happen? Um, I can see myself going between eight or nine. That fast. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Yeah, probably a six or a seven. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned before that in attitude you had rapport with your unconscious mind. What if you had rapport with your conscious thoughts and your unconscious thoughts about finance? What if those fears and doubts disappeared? If they were over there somewhere? Yeah. What would happen? That would be good. Be good. And if you constantly read articles about money, what would happen to your finance? Where would the score go from? One through to? To six. To six. And if you constantly expanded your knowledge on finance, what would happen? Probably go to a six or seven. Beautiful. So on that knowledge, you can get yourself to a six or seven already. Yeah. Because success leaves clues. We constantly run patterns, but we sometimes <coughs> fail to do it in other areas of our life. But did you see, with his own knowledge, he started to light back up. Oh, if I did that and that, it would change. Good job. So you can stay there for a moment. Give him a clap. <laughs> what I want you to do now is to run this exercise with somebody next to you on your table. If there's an odd number, you might have to change tables. So five minutes apiece, what I want you to do is ask them the question. We've got to get them out of the water. Ask them the question, be real. What do you give yourself on a scale of one to 10 for this area? And then line it up for them. They might have a fortune cookie, like the cash. Maybe they've got a map of Tasmania, something different. And then ask them those questions. What are you doing to get an eight or a nine in that area? And then if you did that in the lowest area, what would happen? So do you have any questions before we begin that exercise? Okay, five minutes apiece, 10 minutes in total. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> okay, how was the exercise? It was fantastic. Okay, what did, what did you learn about yourself? <laughs> yes, I had a very, very good guide. Um, I learned that I have to work on my financial intelligence as much as my attitude. Interesting. And what will the result be? The result will be that I will be very, very wealthy. Very nice. Excellent. One learning from this table. What has somebody learned about themselves? Saliha. Um, putting too much focus in two aspects in the wheel of life and when I could put more focus in the other ones that I'm weak at. Does anybody have that as well? You put too much focus in one area and you're blinded to the other? Absolutely. Any learnings? Any insights? Lucy? Uh, I was discussed with her. I just realised that I don't want a career. <coughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> and so she asked me what I would improve, like, uh, to get more on career. So, but I don't want to. That mm -hmm. would make me unhappy. So, so imagine somebody coming along and trying to motivate you about the career. <laughs> See the body language? No. No, go away. Good. Daniel. 
Um, sorry, what was the question? Where are we going? What did you learn? Oh, um, just like that. I think um, they all sort of work together. So if you're not, well, you can focus on one area. If you're not focusing on parts that are important to you, the other areas in your life come crashing down around you too. Mm. Mm. So you kind of drag yourself down everywhere else rather than just one. Mm. Or you can focus on one to be positive. Um, if you're not focused on certain parts of your yourself then you can't succeed anyway really. Mm. Is there, are there any other mums or dads in the room? So when I got into business all of my time and energy was into the business. 15, 16, 17 hour days. Go home, Nikita's like, Daddy can you play? Oh no sorry, I'm busy. And then all of a sudden I look at my wheel of life and my family life is down here. I don't even know my daughter. One day she says, Daddy doesn't love me. It was a big realisation that I'd put too much effort and energy into one area, but I didn't pay enough attention to others. And they are all connected, intimately connected, especially your health and your business. Who cares if you've got a million bucks of sales coming in, if tomorrow you can't even get out of bed and enjoy it with your health? Nathan, any insights? Uh, I learned that although having goals, which mm -hmm. is a great thing to do and reviewing them multiple times a day, um, it's actually breaking down the action steps in certain areas. Mm -hmm. It's obviously my weakest part of my life and looking at the action steps that, that will take me to that goal, mm -hmm. like, like daily action steps. So important. We'll show you a method later on to increase goal attainment levels by a thousand percent.